Another variable that has a major influence on gamma is how much time is left before the option expires. Even if all other things remain completely static, the simple passage of time will have an effect on the gamma of an option. This chart shows the gamma of the $100 strike options based on where the underlying price is, with an implied volatility of 40% and various days to expiry. As we can see, this chart is very similar to the one from the previous lecture, that showed the effect of varying implied volatilities on gamma. Whether the passage of time leads to an increase or decrease in the gamma depends on where the underlying price is relative to the strike price. When the underlying price is close to the strike price, so when the option is at the money or close to the money, the option's gamma increases as time passes. If the option is still at the money as we come into expiration, gamma spikes dramatically, meaning any move in the underlying price will have a dramatic effect on the option's delta. Towards either side of the chart though, where the underlying price is far away from the strike price, we can see that as time passes, the gamma reduces to close to zero. The further away the underlying price is, the sooner this happens. Let's now look at five different strike prices to further illustrate how the gamma evolves as time passes. This chart shows the gamma of the 70, 85, 100, 115 and $130 strikes. The x-axis shows the days to expiry, so as we move from left to right on the chart, we can see how the gamma for each of these strikes changes as time passes. If we compare this gamma chart to a chart of the corresponding deltas for call options at those strikes, we can understand why we see these patterns. This is a chart of the corresponding call deltas. All parameters are exactly the same, except the delta is displayed instead of the gamma. When we are getting close to expiry, the in-the-money strikes of $70 and $85 both have a delta of close to 1. For this to change, the underlying price would have to decrease dramatically, which with hardly any time remaining until the options expire is unlikely. A $1 change in the underlying price will therefore barely affect their delta, so their gamma is very small. Similarly, the out-of-the-money call strikes of $115 and $130 both have a delta of close to zero. For this to change, the underlying price would have to increase dramatically, which with hardly any time remaining until the options expire, is also unlikely. A $1 change in the underlying price will therefore barely affect their delta, so their gamma is very small. For the at-the-money strike of $100 though, the picture is very different. Remember, as the time to expiry approaches zero, the delta of in-the-money call options approaches one, and the delta of out-of-the-money call options approaches zero. The at-the-money strike of $100 could still easily be either, with a $1 change in the underlying price having a large impact on which is most likely with only a small amount of time left. A $1 change in the underlying price can therefore have a large impact on the delta of the option so the gamma of the at-the-money strike is high as we come into expiration. In summary, with less time remaining until expiry, there is less time for price to move. This means that large moves before expiration are less likely. This leaves both in-the-money and out-of-the-money options with very little gamma, because it would take a very large price move to change their delta significantly. For at-the-money options though, this leads to an increase in gamma, this is because with a small amount of time until expiry, even small changes in the underlying price have a large impact on the likelihood of the option expiring in the money or out of the money.